Alright guys, Tom Scrabber here and today I hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far as Rostermania continues onwards, more announcements to discuss every single video at this point, but also Crim6 going on a bit of a rampage about his expectations for Call of Duty Vanguard and why league play is certainly not just enough in this upcoming title, but also top 25 Call of Duty player of all time discussions certainly hitting the timeline last night. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comment section below, like if you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe if you are new as always, I would greatly appreciate it, I'm really upset the channel, thank you very much indeed for doing that. First of all, so Certainly a lot of discussion right now which players that we saw in the league last year could potentially return this time around. 540 may well be one of them, as you can see right here. This tweet certainly well from his time on the Paris Legion list last season. Also, though, that a few of you guys were pointing out to me, this from Aqua, as you can see right here in his bio, former professional Call of Duty player, it says now, usually when players aren't sure what they're going to do, they're kind of fielding offers and trying to find a spot somewhere. They'll say professional Call of Duty player for question mark or something along those lines. Even players that haven't have been in the pro scene and now maybe are in the challenge decides they're still saying a similar thing. The fact that just to straight up say former maybe indicates that Aqua is going to be moving on. It could well be the first casualty of this offseason in terms of our players for many a year here in Call of Duty history deciding to retire. That'd be a pretty big loss. I think he was a pretty decent player for a time this season on the Paris Legion, but it's just tough as the main ER. There's not too many spots going around in the league and especially without expansion, do you really want to go down to Chandler's and grind it out for another year? It's going to be tough to do so. So we may start to see some players um, well, retire and move away from the scene and uh, well of course that will that remains to be seen over these coming days. Rise Nation could be an organisation to pick some of these guys up if they do come in, but are they making it abundantly clear they want to be in Call of Duty, and they want to be in Call of Duty as soon as possible, whenever the CDL is happy to give them a spot, as we looked at last night. The beginning Sastag Rise cards, only a matter of time until our return. So whether that's this year, whether that's uh, next year, that remains to be seen, but that's uh, still exciting stuff nonetheless for Call of Duty fans. And let's go on to this then. So yesterday, Minnesota Rocker do their announcement, and uh, well, they confirm what their roster is going to be for the upcoming year, introducing your Minnesota Rocker for Call of Duty Vanguard. Really cool thing there, do you like a skydiving thing? Right here? I thought it was particularly cool. And well, yes, they are of course going to be keeping the same roster going into next year. To me, this is the biggest question mark of the offseason. It's totally understandable they want to keep the same roster, they want to build around it. I'm sure there might have been some interest for guys like Stanley from other organisations. Like um, I was saying like before the season ended, if I was Los Angeles Thieves, I knew that Rocker were never going to get rid of Stanley. But if I was LA Thieves, I might have gone in there and thought about uh, trying to get Stanley off that team as one of my uh, one of my SMGs, sorry, to pair with a, obviously a very solid AR combo in, um, in Octane and Kenny that pretty much has been confirmed already. We looked at the Octane confirmation last night. Of course, they're finishing out their team with Envoy and Draza, it seems. No necessarily you know, need for Standy here, but um, still could have been pretty interesting regardless. Now, of course, Rocket didn't want to get rid of them, and they want to build around the same team going forwards for next year, and their result at the Stage 5 Major certainly makes it understandable that they do want to um, you know, continue down the same route. And they came fourth of the World Championship, right? So not a bad result by any means, but um, not a result that's maybe a uh, instilling maybe too many Rocker fans with an incredible amount of confidence. I'm not really sure what their perspective is. Just because there's so many other teams that, um, well, seem to have been making massive upgrades throughout this off-season, right? Like, there's a few other squads that have drastically improved what they're capable of. And when Rocker's respawn got good last year, that's when they were, you know, a force and, and particularly scary to deal with. But, um, well, when it wasn't, then they were, well, a little bit more suspect, honestly, at times. And they could lose series that you weren't necessarily expecting them to. So, I think that they're still obviously a scary squad going into next year. But um, it's very possible that some of these other teams, Los Angeles Thieves, Los Angeles Grillers, you know, Optic Dallas, for example, whatever they're going to be, could have surpassed these guys in terms of where they were. And maybe um, they'll look back and think, potentially we could have done an upgrade, but it's tough to say exactly what you do there. And you want to keep the chemistry together as well, as Major Maniac says, picking up where we left off in Minnesota. Excited to be back under a great organization where everyone has the same goal in mind. And there's some attached as well. Excited to keep on building with Major Maniac, Priester, and Sally next year. Thank you for all the support. And if anything, Priester this year didn't have his greatest year as an individual. But um, next year, that maybe will be a different story because in World War II, he was pretty spectacular as well. Modern Warfare also. So maybe that could indeed take this squad to an even greater level. Let's talk about this then, right? So a discussion a few days ago on the importance of league play and ranked play in an ELO-based system coming into Call of Duty Vanguard here. And as Octane says, you know, give me a number that goes up or down on the leaderboard so I can treat out Reaper gifts like back in the World War II days. Of course, uh, all of us would like to see a good, competent ranked play system like an ELO-based system that we saw Sledgehammer introduce in World War II. Just 
just a few years ago. But Crimsix is not necessarily convinced it's just about the rank play system, right? Because as he says here for Modern Warfare, you know, there was some discussion about crossplay going on at the time and the importance that that was going to bring for whatever reason. And as he says, look, making a damn good game should be everyone's number one hopefuls for Modern Warfare. It goes on to say right here, think about it the last time that there was good public matches, the public match players enjoyed, casual players enjoyed, and also good competitive play. Pretty much uh, the last time that was occurring, it was in Black Ops 3. Maybe even earlier than that, depending on the way you look at things. And Black Ops 3 came out in 2015. And Crimson's like, look, that's my point effectively. It's been way too long since we've actually had a good title that's also good for competitive play. That is the crux of the issue, not necessarily the league play in itself. So hopefully, Citizen Games and Dead World Vanguard can deliver on this front. Nah, that the ranked bro. is important? I think ranked is important, Porter. Bro, I do. people say ranked is, dude, shut the up, dude. What like, do you mean, Porter? Ranked, bro, everybody bro, wants bro, to see a good bro, ranked play system. I know everyone wants to see ranked, but you want to play ranked play on a trash game? No, you don't. The, the, well, the problem isn't that. The problem isn't that, Tommy. The, when was the last game both. that had that that had good pubs and good competitive at the same time? When was the last one? Uh, Think about it. Think about it. I'll f sit here and wait. And people will say Black Ops Four. I okay. People that's are saying debatable. three. People are saying Black Ops Three. A lot Literally, of Black Ops Threes, bro. And, and so you guys particularly hopeful that Crimson is a kind of well, ideally prophecy would come to fruition here, and Vanguard's actually going to be a good game at all fronts. Because I think it is a fair point, right? Who wants to play league play on a game that's absolutely terrible? Of course, the competition always does that, instill some drive in certain individuals. But still, a good game is is fundamentally what we'd like to see, and that maybe that probably hasn't been the case since Black Ops Three, 2015. Like it's almost seven years ago. Crazy to think about how yeah, how long that is to be honest, a go. But um, still, what a game, no doubt. And even before then, right, if you're not thinking about Black Ops 3, because Banner Protect, there was some discussion about uh, the issues that that caused for competitive play. There's always talk about Banner Protect every year that we should bring it back in some form or another. I'm not sure I want to see it in the original form, but maybe we can do a video on that someday, somehow, at least if it gets rumored or something. And well, let's talk about this then. So Shotzi tweets out, boots or jetpack Call of Duty. I mean, I can't imagine what Shotzi would have been like on some of these jetpack CODs. I think I saw a clip the other day of him like playing an Infinite Warfare wager or something, and um, like, like, I don't know, ninjuring Envoy, like he jumped behind him and knifed him in the back or something. It's pretty incredible. But I don't really see him play too much on those games before he came in for the boots era, of course, Modern Warfare, and since then. But it would have been absolutely deadly on a jetpack call, actually. there's no doubt about that. But um, anyway, still, this is what Shotzi has to discuss. And there was a fair bit of interesting talk yesterday from, well, the Halo Championship Series with regard to the greatest Halo players of all time. So HCS, they're actually going through and they're doing their own Halo Top 25 best players. So the countdown begins. And look, I don't know too much about Halo, so you can see the players right here. Maybe some of you guys agree with this, some of you guys disagree with this. I'm sure that a lot of these, um, a lot of these players are very controversial. Like it's so hard to do a top 25 players of all time. But interestingly enough, these are the ones they've announced so far. This is like not a uh, David Carvalho. This is another Karma from the Halo side. And the 14th player where they've got to so far is actually going to be Shotzi. Very interesting to be honest. So coming in at 14, a world champion that changed the way Halo is played. That's going to be Shotzi. He won it a couple of years ago before moving to Call of Duty. Didn't really even play Halo for for too long. I mean, probably a fair bit of time. But Halo is such a storied game for so many years that I think a lot of people were surprised that Shotzi was like, I guess, this high up on the list. Personally, I think I shouldn't be on this list, but I am honored, says Shotzi. So really interesting, the official Halo Championship series doing this top 25 players of all time. Of course, it raised the question, what should that look like for Call of Duty? Crimson says the following, damn it, I don't think I've made the Halo top 25 list, but I could have made the top 125 list. No way to know for certain, however. And um, I mean, Crimson's played for a fair bit of time in Halo before he came to Call of Duty, but on an incredible amount of time in some of the players over there been playing for you know dog years, years to be honest so um, I guess they'd be a little bit higher but uh, yeah still Crimson's could have made this some way somehow but of course that did raise the question what is the list going to look like exactly for Call of Duty and well this is what Attach's Twitch chat got up to with their top 25 Call of Duty all time list now this isn't absolutely terrible I mean um, there's a few obviously uh, I guess it was late night or whatever so there was no European fans in there so we don't get any European players even though you know Banty could certainly chuck in here I think for sure and um, maybe Zero as well on a good day but uh, anyway there's still some other players that maybe could have got excluded here like for example big timer you don't see him rambo ray i mean um yeah jake is here so at least that's a good one but i think it's a relatively solid list all things considered it would just be so tough to do this right if the cod league tried to come out and actually do their top 25 players of all time that'd be um i mean it would cause a lot of controversy there's no doubt about that one because it's so hard to figure out where you rank these players because like guys like big timer for example or even a guy like tp who was um of course played for many years and done great things in call of duty but um of course like well hasn't played in the most recent eras 
with the highest competition. Like, how much does that count? How much does a guy like Stainville, for example, who was around for several years back in the day, but hasn't really played Call of Duty at the top level in ages, where does that rank them? It's just so hard to do so. But uh, yeah, this one goes Gunners at 25, then Parasite Crowder, formerly known as Replays, of course, currently the coach for Atlanta Phase. Selling me interesting at 22, which is maybe fair enough, I guess, on recent performances, but it's tough to say. Octane Priest and Merc enable Nate Shards, John Zuma, TP Attach, RC is a BZ Apathy. So this gets into the top 10. I think this top 10 is actually pretty reasonable, right? Because Apathy and Slasher have kind of always been those two players, for, in my opinion, on the border of that kind of top 10. The top 7, I think, is an absolute no-brainer in some form or another. It's got to be Crimson, Scump, Karma, Clayster, Formal, Aches, and Jacob in some order or another. And Simp having, yeah, him just after them maybe makes sense for now. I think that, uh, yeah, maybe next year after Simp wins a couple of more championships, he can start actually encroaching on this legendary top 7 here. But, um, I mean, yeah, Simp right behind them, a BZ at 11. I mean, it's just crazy how fast these guys have, have uh, well, climbed up the ladder. But I think all things considered, this isn't a bad list, but let me know down in the comment section below what you guys would change and make different going forwards. I just wanted to finish off with this clip from Insight, because of course we talked about there was no European players on that list, which uh, maybe is fair, maybe is not. I probably would argue a couple should be on there, but Insight's given a few more years, could be someone to consider on that list. Here he is playing Warzone, absolutely smoking people with the SMG in hand, and it was, can we say reply, people don't even know about your SMG yet. Maybe, yeah, well, if required to put it out one day or another, Insight could be a very competent SMG for this team. Very much in to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, I'd greatly appreciate a like on the video. I really upset that YouTube are going to know you enjoyed this content. Other people like you may enjoy this content as well. And I've grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care. And I will see you next time. Oh, me. He's right here. He's right here. The jump dude right here. Holy What the, f what the